I was asked to speak today, I sat down and began writing about all of the examples of trust in my life. The relationships that I've built with family and friends, and even sharing my life story so publicly. With a little self-reflection, I realized that trust for me was a switch that had been turned off for most of my life. I think I even avoided thinking about it. In my early 20s, I thought I had managed to escape the traumatic events of my past relatively unscathed. It wasn't until my late 20s that I realized how wrong I was. You see, for much of my life, I had been hiding my identity from those who knew me. At a certain point, I realized that I would have to make the greatest leap of trust that I might ever take in my life. I went public with my life story with the help of Ted on the main stage in Vancouver between Bill and Melinda Gates and Sting. No pressure. Having the willingness to put yourself out there without being sure how others will react is a scary thing to do, I know. But once again, I find myself on a TED stage because I realize that every time I share my story, I enable myself to let down my guard and cultivate trust. And I hope that I can show others that it's okay to do the same. For those of you who haven't seen my first TED Talk, allow me to give you some context. On the night of November 5th, uh, November 5th 1990, the world as I knew it was turned upside down. My father walked into a Marriott hotel in Manhattan and assassinated the extremist rabbi Meyer Kahana. With that act, my father at once betrayed his family and his community. Still, he maintained his innocence from prison and was initially found not guilty of the murder. The idea that we might someday be a family again was a glimmer of hope for a young boy who idolized and adored his father. I loved him as any son loves their father. And I trusted him when he swore to me that he was innocent. Instead, from his prison cell, he continued to encourage and coordinate plans with others to break him out of prison, to assassinate the judge that sentenced him, and to bomb multiple landmarks around New York City. Thankfully, those plans were foiled due to the bravery of Ahmed Salem, an intelligence asset who infiltrated this group of men. Unfortunately, this did not deter them from going on to bomb the World Trade Center in 1993, in which six innocent lives were lost. My father would be retried and sentenced to life in prison for his role. Due to the fallout of my father's actions, my family was ostracized from one community after another. In a world like that, it was easy for a young kid to be fearful of getting close to others. My trust was non-existent except when it came to my immediate family. At 14, I was going into my eighth new school and dealing with some of my worst years of being bullied. At the height of dealing with those issues, my mother remarried. At that point in my life, I was in desperate search for a positive male role model, someone who could instill in me a sense of pride and self-confidence and teach me to stick up for myself in the face of my aggressors. My new stepfather had studied martial arts, and on our first night together at dinner, I'll never forget it, he said, you don't have to worry anymore. Your father is here now. He seemed to me to be exactly what I had been looking for. But it wasn't long before he began to show his true colors. He used physical and emotional abuse to dominate me and tear at what little was left of my self-worth. This made me more guarded, wary of trusting others. 
Through sheer fate, after four years of being tormented by this man, my family managed to escape, but at that point, the damage had been done. Of all of the things that I'll talk about today or that I've been through in my life, none did more harm to my self-esteem than the torment that I went through during those years. At this point, I was still hiding my identity from everyone who knew me. Naturally, I thought this was the best way to protect myself from being hurt. But at a certain point, I realized that there was something missing from the relationships that I was building. That word, trust, again. Feeling like I could never truly be myself around others for fear of how they would judge me if they knew who I was. If they knew what my father had done. I... This put a huge strain on me. I didn't realize the harm that I was doing to myself, but eventually I began to realize that I was in fact hindering my growth. In my book, The Terrorist Son, I tell a couple of stories about sharing my identity with two of my closest friends. Building trust with them over time made me feel as though it might be okay to tell them who I was. And the reactions couldn't have been more different. My first friend was so shocked by some of the more extreme elements of the story that he basically laughed awkwardly the whole time. And my other friend was mad, but only because I didn't tell him first. That they reacted so casually to my confession made me think that it might be okay to tell others who I was. I had no idea what a gift they had given me. But it didn't always end so positively. People's reactions have ranged from nervous laughter and shock to outright anger and threats against my life. I even once sustained a wound across my hand as I tried grabbing a knife from someone I thought was a friend as he lunged at me, exclaiming, I'd be doing America a service if I killed you. Luckily, I was able to escape without any serious injury. But at this point, I had experienced the joy of sharing who I was with others, and I recognized the strength and courage that their acceptance brought me. I realized that trying to cut myself off from those closest to me was doing a great deal of disservice. I, pardon me. Thank you. Thank you. So I shared my identity with my friends, and they showed me that it was okay for me to be honest with others about who I was. I knew that there was an element of danger to putting myself out there as the son of a terrorist. I knew that there would be some people who hated me simply because I was my father's son. I told myself this wouldn't be how most people react. And during my speaking engagements, I feel like my best self, getting to work with and befriend incredible people from all over the world who are inspired to create change. But it wasn't always that simple. Um, I didn't just jump into sharing my story. I, 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 I dipped my toes in several times, not always successfully, before I felt confident in speaking publicly. I have struggled with depression for much of my life, and sometimes it manifests itself as a cloud of doubt. At other times, it feels like an elephant has sat itself on my chest, and its sole task is to keep me from being able to function. No matter how long or how often the voice in my head yells at me to finish a simple task, or how long I watch the negative result of my inaction grow, the elephant sat utterly uncaring. 
But I pushed forward because I knew there was value in my story. I became involved in the anti-war movement in the United States. And I saw so many instances where I thought if I could show people that I had been subjected to the precise ideology that they were fearful of and that I didn't become radicalized, then what does that say about the vast majority of Muslims in the world who are not indoctrinated the way that I was? What does that say about our capacity for change? It was all of these experiences and a newfound friendship that helped me to step inside or step onto my first TED stage. I tell people all the time how my best friend Sharon was my courage before I had it. She believed in me before I believed in myself. I know without a doubt that I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for the fact that she has at least two people's worth of courage inside of her. Learning to trust others helped me to grow as a person, helped me to experience relationships unencumbered by fear and doubt. Each time I share my story, I feel that I enable myself to, as I said, to let down my guard. So often we build these walls around ourselves and they don't just limit what others see of us. They often limit what we see of ourselves. And I came to the very obvious conclusion that if I share myself with others in an open and honest way, that they in turn showed me that I was capable of more than I thought I was. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.